Next on BYUSN, where is Jackson Robinson? Yesterday, the deadline for Mr. Robinson to decide if he's going to test the draft waters or return to college. Does no news mean good news? And which Power 5 team do we want BYU football to play at home in 2025? We'll decide our ideal kick times as well for the Cougars. Travis Hansen is in studio to talk about BYU signing of a Russian superstar and expectations in year one from Kevin Young. And Matt Brown of Extra Points Newsletter got to play EA Sports College Football 25. How is it? And how does BYU look? How do we get that invite? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, May 30th. I am Spencer Linton, and he is an aspiring interior designer, Jerem Jordan. Okay, so Dave Broberg, who is the BYU Athletics Director of Creative Design and Brand Strategy, posted a listing in Lubbock, Texas, of a house for a million bucks, and it's really nice, and it's got some BYU-themed stuff. Look at the movie room. It's a BYU man cave. Who is this? Four bedroom, four and a half bath, 5,400 square feet on an acre lot with a pool. This sounds nice if you've got a million bucks. Um, so, yeah, if you're a BYU fan and you want to live in Lubbock, go to all the BYU games against Texas Tech there. You've got a house ready for you, ready to go. Look, look at the Smithfield House chairs on the Make it a one. BYU Airbnb specifically for Cougar fans that want to travel to watch BYU play Texas Tech in any sport. I'm not sure we'll pay the mortgage throughout the year for, with just that, but that is a fun idea. When we open up our Lubbock Bureau of BYUSN, we Lubbock have a place Bureau. to do the show from. Who's going to take one for the team and do that one? <laughs> hey, uh, sorry, man. We're sending uh, Chef to Lubbock. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to put you in the Lubbock Bureau for a year. Um, <laughs> Shep is at Disneyland day two today, and he said that in the waiting of the gates to open, that the Cougar fight song broke out. What? That sounds like the most on-brand, corniest BYU yes. Disneyland thing ever. Yes. <laughs> hey, by the way, <laughs> sale on Disney tickets. Shep knows all about it. So, uh, hey, you want to take the family at some point, Jerem. Now's a good time to go. Oh, wait. You're going to be a little busy this summer. That's yeah, sure. I'll be busy not going anywhere. <laughs> and playing NCAA football 25. Yeah, someone tweeted at me. They're like, you're not going to have time to do any of that. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> I have two self-sustaining children. They'll be just fine. Grab your video game controllers, rise and shout. Time for what's trending. We just love announcements. The yes. Noon, that's what we'd like. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kickoff times for BYU's first three football games. We're there. I think he should come back, take advantage of playing for Kevin and that staff. Probably be one of the best players in the Big 12. This is new ground, so we'll see what happens. Jackson Robinson. Where are you at? Yesterday, the deadline for players to withdraw from the NBA draft if they want to return to college came and went. As of this moment, we have not heard a blip on the radar, anything close to news about what Jackson Robinson's decision is. I'm hearing he's not coming back to BYU well, is the expectation. Last night. But we haven't heard either way. A lot of people on X and social media stayed up late, including one of his former teammates, Ali Khalifa, to see what Jackson's decision would be. There are some fantastic posts as well. We'll begin with this from Seth Davis of CBS Sports. At Seth Davis Hoops posting, anybody got Jackson Robinson's cell number? <laughs> like, what's the decision? I mentioned Either Ali way. Khalifa, yeah. who said, it's 6 a.m. in Egypt. Still waiting on Jackson Robinson's decision. Come on, bro, I'm trying to sleep. And then tag Jackson, obviously. Is Ali thinking he's going to Louisville? Crickets. And this is a classic from 801 Bracketology. The post says, Grandma stays locked up until Jackson Robinson announces <laughs> his return to college basketball. Ball is in your court. For those unfamiliar with the meme, this is not <laughs> real. Okay, so just calm down. Stop composing handwritten letters to BYU Broadcasting. Um, pretty funny. Pretty funny stuff. Jackson, donde esta, hermano? Jerem, what does no news on Jackson's decision mean? Wait, I don't know. I, it doesn't mean anything. We, we don't know whether he – this doesn't automatically mean he stayed in the draft. And it doesn't mean he didn't already tell, say, Kentucky. But uh, the vibe and, you know, what I'm hearing is that, uh, you know, he's not returning to BYU. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I don't know if he's going to Kentucky or staying in the draft. I don't know. He needs to tell everybody. I want to believe that no news means by default 
he is going to stay in the NBA draft and potentially be a draft pick out of BYU. But we don't know. Think about the Noah Waterman situation when you had to hop in the portal by a certain time and we were all like, oh, there's no news of this rumor that Noah Waterman may be leaving BYU. And then after the fact, turns out he did enter the portal in time and the news came out a little bit after the deadline. So could Jackson Robinson have done the same thing? He's, didn't come out. he's done it, but no news has been released because they're trying to hold something close to the vest and they want this big reveal to happen or something? I, I don't know. I'm surprised it has happened yet. It was supposed to happen by midnight Eastern last night. There was a reporter, but not one with, you know, that's super out there that said, oh, he told me he's uh, staying in the draft. But, like, no one believe, believed him? I'm, I'm inclined to believe that the default of no news means he's staying in the NBA draft. Could be, but you have to say other way. I, I would think the NBA would produce a list this morning and say, all right, here's the draft eligible guys that stayed in. Because there were certain guys like Caleb Love at Arizona that's returning to, to Arizona. So we'll see him this year. Listen, the NBA is so too know. busy deciding whether or not Luka Doncic traveled on one of his game winners a few games ago. And they're trying to figure out how to uh, delineate what the, a gather step is and what a travel is. A, a gather? <laughs> it's unlimited <laughs> touches in a gather. They got, they got bigger fish to fry, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what hey, it means. We'll see. It's but, crazy. But he, he ain't coming back to BYU is the vibe. Um, so, yeah, best luck to Jax, whatever that means, NBA or Kentucky or Louisville. Is that why Ali is so I interested, no just idea. as a friend? Well, Kansas Maybe. apparently was in the mix, too, because our friend at Jayhawk Lasso, who is mm. an adopted BYU fan outside of his KU fandom, said that uh, he posted a picture of BYU and a Utah logo <laughs> on a clown figure and a Kansas logo on someone else who said he has a 67% chance of making the right decision. Obviously poking fun at Utah. I don't know how serious it is, but hey, Jackson's got options. It's good to be him. We just want to hear from him. Yeah. Well, what you doing, Doc? What's going on? Okay, topic two. KSLsports.com interviewed BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo recently who said the 2025 football non-conference schedule is, quote, close to finish. Okay. It would appear BYU is hosting Southern Utah on September 6th. There's an opening in week two. Then in week three, the Cougars could be playing at East Carolina, another G5 road game. Not a okay. big fan of that. Return game from a 2022 game in Provo. That game was pushed back from this fall to next fall, September 20th. BYU is required to play uh, a Power of Four conference opponent, non-conference play by the Big 12. So there are 12 teams. Colton Potter, our producer, went out and looked. With Power 5 openings in 2025, six specifically with Week 2 openings. Let's Ooh, look at those. Okay. LSU, okay. Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern. Then teams with an open spot, but not necessarily in Week 2. You can shift things around. Notre Dame, ever heard of them? Not coming to Provo. Uh, didn't want to before. Why would they now? Duke, Miami, Stanford, Washington State, Oregon State. If you could pick... Who do you want to come in Provo in Week 2 in 2025 as the home Power 5 game? Because BYU has uh, five other games in conference at home. So they uh, – sorry, four other games plus Southern Utah. So it will be at home. Who do you want? I know that LSU and Notre Dame are on those lists. Pipe dreams, <laughs> folks. As you said. That would be fun. BYU couldn't get Notre Dame to come to Provo when Notre Dame was under contract. Yeah. Already. Good to job. return to Provo. Good job. Get over. They had to settle on playing in Las Vegas in a Notre Dame de facto home game in the Shamrock Series. The Shamrock series. series, yeah. That's as close as BYU got to Notre Dame coming to Provo. So that's not happening. LSU's not coming to Provo either, Jerem. No. LSU's not coming to Provo. LSU, these teams don't have to. Why would they? They don't want to. But I am inclined to believe that a team like Miami could play a game in Provo mm. if BYU returns because, lest we forget, at one point, I believe in 2028, 2029, around that time, there was an announced series yep. between BYU and Miami. Yes, it was already in the works. And Tom Holmo arguably was more excited about getting that series than any other future series that had been scheduled at that point. The resurrection of the 88 yes. and 90 series. I am inclined to believe that those conversations – with the athletic director at Miami, and that program are still out there. And he referenced a lot of moving parts, as many as 10 different teams and people at a table to try and make all of this schedule announcement happen. 
that feels like a Miami to me. Mm. I'm speculating. I don't know, but because Miami was already on BYU's schedule, yeah. I think that that very well could happen, that the Hurricanes could play in Provo in 2025 and BYU would return to play in Miami in 2026. So or, watch or, out, Coral Gables. Whenever. It doesn't have to be 26, right? Just yeah, yeah whenever. Point. There will yeah. be a home and when they your phrase, a home and home or sorry, a home and road home and road, series. Because it's not two home games. Home and road series for BYU. Yeah. But I, I, that would be my number one option, and it feels realistic to me because of the recent history there. If not Miami, gosh, option two alternates, if you will, Vanderbilt and Northwestern, I feel like are winnable home games for BYU in the P5 slate. And anytime BYU matches up with a Big Ten team, specifically uh, Northwestern in this case, I like how BYU's physicality matches up with a team like that. BYU is a Big Ten type team, right? Sure. In the way they're – how physical they are. I would – I like Miami. I like that idea a lot. Another, another thought. How about South Carolina? Um, it'd be the first meeting ever with the Gamecocks. SEC in Provo. Future game in Columbia at some point. Yeah. Will they, like Arkansas a few years back, make a trip to Provo? Like, could that? Yeah. Would that happen? We just saw it happen with Arkansas, like you mentioned. I could see Tom – trying to work something out with Washington State or Oregon State. Like Helping Tom, him out? Tom is very, like, we got helped out by a lot of people. Yes. I try and help out. Like, he's a good Samaritan athletic director. That's, that could be a scheduling. very likely scenario. Yes. The thing with 2025 we need to talk about, though, is why are we going to East Carolina? Buy that game out, Tom. <laughs> I know, but Tom's too nice. Greenville. At Wyoming is happening. Who knows down the line? Like, I think there's a return with Troy in the mix at some point in the future. East Carolina. Ah. I don't like G5 road games. I just don't want to see them. So that we don't know ECU is happening, but that's like on the schedule. Southern Utah is happening, which, by the way, they got sanctions. their wrist slap. For sanctions. Some sanctions. Why are we sanctioning FCS schools? It's the, you got P5s to worry about. It's the dumbest thing ever. <sighs> Leave Southern Utah alone. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The NCAA, with everything that's swirling around their heads, you're going to go after Southern Utah? You got 2.7 billion other things to worry about. You're. You're going to pick on Literally. the kid that can't really defend himself? Come on. Yeah, that's Ridiculous. Lame. All right, topic for another day. So we'll see what 2025 is. Could be fun. The Vanderbilt idea to me, because of like the strong alumni base for Nashville BYU. Nashville would be cool. Nashville would be we sweet. We saw it in person in 2019 that summer, and it was amazing. So if there was a Great home and road with show. Vanderbilt where they come to Provo and then BYU returns to the Nashville area, there will be I would love that. thousands of BYU fans in Nashville. we get a baseball series too? That would be one of those games where BYU fans might outnumber Vanderbilt fans. <laughs> add, add Vandy. Wow. <laughs> All right. On to topic three. Hey, today we will learn the kick times for four different BYU football games Wait. in the 2024 season. The first three weeks of the season and then every non-Saturday game, which means Oklahoma State. So, Southern Illinois on August 31st, SMU on September 6th, Wyoming in Laramie on September 14th. Why? You love it so much, Jerem. And Oklahoma State, Friday night, October 18th. Yeah. Huge game right there with the other Cowboys. <laughs> that's the best home game? And there are two sets of Cowboys on this graphic. Oh, man, that's too, too many. So, Jerem, what are your ideal kick times for each of these four games? Okay, let's start with Southern Illinois. If it's on ESPN+, Plus, I would say 1. But if it's on linear TV, give me like 6 p.m. or Evening. 8.15. Sam Houston last year was – remember, that was late. Um, because it was FS1. At SMU, give me 6 o'clock, okay? Give me 6 o'clock. These are all mountain. mountain. Okay. Yes, because we live here. Um, <laughs> at Wyoming, give me late game um, CBS Sports Network probably or FS1 kind of vibe. 8 p.m., give me late game. And then Oklahoma State, give me late game on that one too. I actually love the, the late game personally. I, uh, BYU's played well at night. I, oh, last year struggle. Since 2019, they've been pretty good at night. But you can just, listen, you can get everything done, and then you can enjoy the game. I just love that. Plus, sometimes I'm calling a volleyball or soccer game, and I want to be able to make the football game too, personally. So that is my pick, um, and I'm excited to see these times. At Wyoming, yeah, is not going to be an ESPN game, by the way. That will be CBS Sports or FS1 is my guess. Not the Mountain West Sports Network? Thank the Lord it's not on that one. Jeez. <laughs>
<laughs> Somebody get James Bates on line one. Nice. Still calling games, dude, on the CW. Yes, he is, and he's great. He's, he's calling super, ACC on the super CW. Super cool dude, and he has to and read some rough promos. Super weird reads. He has to deal with some rough promos. Yes, he does. If you CW. know, you know. <laughs> hey, the CW apparently is going to air the Snoop Dogg Bowl, so and they got have, that the going Flash for season five. All right. Yeah. My ideal kick times, Southern Illinois, it's hot. It's late August. Give me an evening kick time, please. Let the shadows creep in so that there's no blaring sun into the stadium. Remember the Portland State scenario? I know it was a bad game. Lauren McClain literally got heat stroke on the yeah, field. That was awful. I want Blaine no part of that. Lane had to come down from the booth and do the interviews. No Lauren part was of okay, that. Luckily. Yes, give me an evening kick for Southern Illinois because it is hot in late August. Also, evening football under the lights at Lavelle early in the season, awesome. At SMU, I went local to the site, so this is 8 p.m. Central. Another. I know we spoke in Eastern time! So, seven kick for those watching in the mountain time zones, primarily in the BYU area. But I chose the late window there because, again, it's going to be blazing hot in Dallas and, and it's humid. A, it's a Friday night, so it's absolutely going to be, what, six or eight or whatever. Yeah. So 8 p.m., give me a late kickoff, but not too late so that the folks don't have to stay up past midnight. It's Friday night, dog. That's not a problem. Here's why I don't like the late kickoff that you presented for at Wyoming. They're going to, and by they, the Wyoming fan base, they'll pregame hard for a long time, Jerem. Just say it. They'll so be liquid <laughs> up. Just say it. So the earlier kick time, the better. It just feels like there's more vitriol when you've been pre-gaming be all day long under yeah. the lights. Texas Tech ran into the buzzsaw under the lights in Laramie last year. Not good. Day game. It removes a little bit of the energy. So I, I want a, an afternoon kick out there. And then Oklahoma State, yeah, six mountain. Anything after six would be fine there. I just picked six because. It's Friday night. Yeah. If That's going to be a great Friday night game, by the if way. If it's a 7 kick or an 8, 15, whatever. Just yeah. give me something after 6 on Friday night. And, and because it's Friday, it won't, I don't think it'll be 8, 15. It'll probably be 6. Yeah, mountain. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It'll be beautiful be in October yeah. with the colors popping up the mountain. Like, this is where all of the people that come over to cover Oklahoma State are like, oh, my gosh, this is the most beautiful venue in the entire Big 12 because of the fall colors that that is prime football watching yep. in the evening in the fall yeah i don't mind a friday home game i don't like a friday road game it's short week tough hot at smu yeah hey hopefully we're doing the show friday morning in some beautiful fall morning weather from lavelle edwards stadium i would think so sometimes man. we do that i would think so our question of the day we just talked about it we'll learn the kick times for four byu football's games in the 2024 season later today when are your ideal kick times for BYU football? Johnny Linehan on X. Hey, Johnny. Says, I love 8.15 p.m. kicks. Call me crazy, but it's I will lets me crazy. be with my actual family during the day and my football family when they're asleep. And football at night is just special. Yeah, it's awesome. And LES, I, that's, the, that's actually my favorite time to watch a game. And you can catch all the other games during the day. Yes, great. you can. It's great. Yes, you can live with the anxiety. And of, we're oh, working. my gosh, what's going to happen with BYU? Yeah. But at least we get to watch these games. We're working here. The freak out will happen later. Yeah. Hashtag BYUS on an X, Facebook, and Instagram to answer that question. Join us tomorrow for a BYU Sports Nation Deep Blue special featuring some of the incredible stories from some of the women at BYU, namely Courtney Wayman, Heather Hampson, Elaine Michaelis. Catch it at noon Eastern tomorrow here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next and in studio, former BYU basketball standout, NBA guy, your old guy, Travis Hansen, discussing Kevin Young's recruiting efforts internationally specifically and his expectations for year one. This is BYU Sports Nation. Got that Russia connection. And also with Coach Kevin Young, like I just, I trust what he's telling me. I trust the process that I'm going to go through with him. So I was like, all right, I'm sold. Yeah, the thing about uh, Coach Young is he's a very genuine dude. It's no secret why he was sought out by BYU to become the new head coach. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, former BYU basketball legend, a guy who 
hey, he had his run in the NBA, and then he did some serious work overseas as well. Still has some international ties. He is Travis Hansen with us in studio. Maple Welcome, Tonian. Travis. What's up? Mapleton. <laughs> one time, uh, Shout so, out to all the people in Mapleton. So one time, I, I think I've told you the story, but if not, I'll just tell it right now on TV and radio. Uh, there's like a baseball and softball parade in Mapleton every year where it's like the kids get in trucks and they go by. And I was just like randomly in front of your house waiting for my daughter to go by. Someone goes, oh, is that your house? And I turn around and I go, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> How that happen? You, that's VIP parking. You can park there any yeah. every year. I right? Venmo you do five bucks. Later. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was 20, but five works. <laughs> You'll take what you I'll can get you. from Jerem for yeah. sure. Yeah, Jerem's a little tight with, you know, okay. I want to <laughs> start this interview, aside from parking at your house, with a tweet that you sent out on April 24th which is fascinating at this juncture because you said at Travis Hanson 24, if you want to follow him on X NCAA men's basketball is competing with EuroLeague and NBA. Wow. And then a mind blown emoji. Never would I have thought this would happen. Amazing and exciting times ahead. Now BYU, we have learned signs a Euro star, an NBA draft pick lottery pick projected. Uh, that's going to help out Kevin Young in the guard line. Travis, what do you think of this transition that you're seeing with high-level players that are now cons legitimately considering college because of NIL and otherwise. It's unbelievable. Like, everything about it is, and it changes every day, it seems like. Um, uh, you know, back in 2020, 2021, when Mark Pope came over, NIL was a little bit, that's risky, and why are we paying student-athletes? And there's a lot of emotions around why we would pay a student-athlete when we haven't before, and and it's hard to grasp, hard to get your mind around. And now the transition is, I mean, they're, they're going to get compensated and, and they're going to get paid. And so, and so you saw the transition and, and then it became, well, can the NCAA uh, men's basketball, can they compete with the EuroLeague for, for a lot of talent? And it turned out to be so. I mean, I started getting phone calls from people in Europe that were asking me um, basically to, to mentor and advise uh, certain talents on, on, on their situations. And so I, 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 we've been working on a few uh, different, uh, you know, situations where, and, and this is not me at BYU, this is me for the kids sure. of, of their families and saying, what should we do? Should we, should we stay and play in the EuroLeague or should we actually come and, and play in the NCAAs and, and what's the American uh, basketball like and does it help us adapt and does it really allow us to get ready for the pro game which we all want to our dreams are to play in the nba and so so yeah it was it's been interesting last couple months is in the last 60 days as you transition from we're paying some kids some money and now all of a sudden we're competing with the euro league and possibly the nba because you rather play in college than you would in the g league if if you're looking at just straight compensation and and not development. Yeah, which is wild. If you're, yeah, if you're a, a high-level college player, you, you're getting paid more than you would in the G League, yep. and the exposure is way better too. Um, are you a pro, and are you not having to take classes? Yes, sure. But uh, you know, for certain one-and-done guys, which BYU anticipates signing a certain Russian here uh, shortly, what role did you play, if any, in the Russia connection there? given that you played in Russia for several years and have great connections. Yeah, you're talking about Yegor, my guy. <laughs> Yegor Denim Vladimir. He's a young Russian 18-year-old that parents played basketball, both of them. They're, they're highly intelligent, really know the game, and, and he's spent the last few years in an amateur contract at Real Madrid, a club that I played for, and probably passion, iconic, ambition, the top club in all of Europe and, and one of the top clubs in the world. And so he's been really well coached. He's been in an incredible system, both academic, ac academic and basketball wise, um, where, where, I mean, he's, he knows Spanish, he knows English, he knows Russian. And so Wild. they, they yeah. contacted me because their parents, uh, uh, you know, obviously knew me from playing in Russia and then from playing in Real Madrid that, you know, should we take on, th there's a little window of opportunity before, we have to decide whether to re-sign with the Real and a pro contract. Should we test the waters in the NCAA? Would it help us? And so it goes back to when I played at Real Madrid, we had a couple of junior kids on the team, on the junior team. And it was, it was uh, Andres Mirotic who ended up playing in the Chicago Bulls. And it was a young kid by the name, I don't know if you guys know this name, is Luka Doncic. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and so. Gonna watch him tonight. Yep, yeah. and so Luka, uh, had the same thing where he was at Real Madrid playing for a junior team, but he 
he had guys in front of him named Sergio Luul. I don't know if you guys know him, but unbelievable player. And Rudy Fernandez. Oh, we know Rudy too. He also had Sergio Rodriguez, who played for Kevin Young in, in Philadelphia, the 76ers. And so Luca had to wait his turn. And it was hard when you know you can compete and play. And he, he had a window of opportunity when Sergio Lul tore his ACL. He was actually thinking about signing with the Rockets and ended up ter- tearing his ACL. So he's, he was out of, you know, 12, 18 months. And that opened the window for Luca to get playing time for Real Madrid. And he showed immediately that he could play sure. at that level. And then all the college scouts saw and, and, uh, and NBA scouts saw. And so he ended up coming over as a lottery pick. So Yegor's in the same situation where he's at Real Madrid, same type of size and skills. Waiting. Waiting for an opportunity, and, and no one's getting injured. <laughs> in fact, they're dominating over there in Europe. Real Madrid won the EuroLeague Championship last year, and this year they got in the EuroLeague Championship again. Unfortunately, they lost to Olympiacos. Mm-hmm. Which, and, uh, but they have an incredible team, veterans that are 10 years older, professionals that know how to play. And so he's had to wait his time. And does he continue to wait? and be at one of the top clubs in the world, or does he try his hand at the NCAAs? And so I was part of his team as far as with his family, understanding and, and, and getting presentations on um, from college coaches and, and the best programs in the nation of, of, of what they would do with him if he did mm. come wow. over. Can you yell at him in Russian still? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. We, we, uh, I just WhatsApp him in Russian. You know? <laughs> Travis Hansen with us on BYU Sports Nation. Money is clearly an important thing. And to your point, these players are going to be given a nice compensation if you come to the NCAA while you wait for maybe something bigger in Europe or the NBA. So it's this nice middle ground. But you still have to choose a coach and a program that you believe can help you develop into a great professional talent. And I set that up that way because I am inclined to believe that these guys want to play for someone like Kevin Young specifically. A lot of teams will throw money out there, but I believe Kevin's the X factor here, or the Y factor, if you will, for BYU. And getting a guy like this, Travis, what role is Kevin Young playing in getting these guys to Provo? Um, it's a great question, and it's one that I've been super surprised to watch as um, you know, you have like John Calipari in Arkansas presenting to Yegor and his family of what, you know, culturally, uh, uh, system development, what, how you would fit in Arkansas and, and, and how we would utilize you. And then watching Kevin Young present um, and, and showcase what he's done with Devin Booker and, and whether it's on the ball or off the ball, what he's done with KD. And you could see Yegor almost mentally saying, I don't want to play off the ball. Oh, but if KD did. And if Kevin Young used KD off the ball, okay, I could accept that. <laughs> you know, if that's the way to play and if, if that's the right way to play. And so development-wise, um, uh, in, in, in the presentations, it, it was shocking how good Kevin Young was, number one, in the presentation. Number, number two, um, how relatable he is, how likable he is, how good he is, how intelligent he is. But then, then they did back research. They, 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 their family's super smart, and they got great people around them. Uh, way better than me. And, um, <laughs> and and so we reached out to GMs and we reached out globally to owners of clubs. And w- was he really going to be an NBA head coach? Yes. Uh, is he really that good? Yes. Is he someone that you would want your son to play for? Absolutely. Uh, it, but on the scale of leaving Real Madrid to come, will he really help him develop? Will he really help him become a professional basketball player and play in the NBA? Uh, undoubtedly. And so it wasn't just nationally the presence of Kevin Young and the reputation of Kevin Young. It was globally that people love him. Mm. That's amazing. People, mm. people trust him. And, it, and it's hard for a young kid and a young family to have a young Russian boy go, playing at Real Madrid and make another step over to the Atlantic and, and come here to Utah and Provo. And so they wanted people that they, they, they would trust, that would take, sure. take care of him. So NIL, it, which makes me uh, even more excited about Yegor, was it was like second, third, fourth, fifth on the list. It was, I want to play, I want to, I want to reach my potential and I want to reach my dreams. And my dreams, uh, one of my dream, part of my dreams is to play in the NBA. Mm. So, so who can I surround myself? A, and it's probably not a one and done. Maybe it will be. Gather feedback from GMs and we'll see what, mm. what ends up happening after the first year. But, 
but th through my process, I want, I want to be the best player I can be, and I want to play in the NBA. So whether that's a one and done, whatever that timeline looks like, they're super patient, they're really smart, and y Yegor's a phenomenal talent. Like, the kid, kid's the real deal. What else should we know about him or the recruitment? Um, you know, Yegor is pretty fun. I mean, he's 18, so he just, you know, is an amateur contract kid over there, and Real Madrid does not mess around. They, they go after the top talent, and and he's got a couple teammates that can play. Like he's got a couple guys. There's another lottery pick guy. There's a Gonzaga commit. Yeah. Yeah, and, and some others. And so, um, Yegor is six nine. He can play on the ball. He can play off the ball. He can shoot it from deep. He can shoot it from three. But he also has a has a um, skill set to shoot it from a little bit deeper. Um, He's wiry, strong. Strength training is going to be a big part of having his body grow and get a little bit stronger as you get into that paint and able to hold guys off on your hip, you know. But you can use those shoulders as weapons as well too. I mean, <laughs> and so so what what scouts see is a the size, the skills, but mainly the IQ to completely destroy a defense. No matter what scheme they throw at you, and you see this with Luca, he's still able to get to his spot. And then it comes down to a read, and then it comes down to whether they make the shot. And whether it's Luca making the shot, or Yegor making the shot, or making the right pass, or make, uh, making the right read, he has that ability, which is, you know, what Kevin Young loves, and what any coach uh, yeah, in the world would love. And so he, he's, he's actually um, a lot more mature and a lot more advanced IQ-wise of reading the game than I, than I anticipated he would be. Travis, we need to do this more often. Shall we? No, nah, I'm too busy. <laughs> too busy. <laughs> and he only pays me five bucks. Yeah. He only didn't want that's, that's what I can afford. Yeah, right I don't get any, yeah. get any love. No, going to, no gear. We I come it. on the show. Where's my sports We need to get stuff? it. There's a box upstairs you. with your name on it. We need to get Travis Hansen one of those boxes. I'll, right? I'll deliver it. Now. Hand yeah. delivered. Take care I'm of that. I'm excited. I'm excited to rep the Sports Nation. Let's go. Logo. I still remember a little bit of Russian. Yalubiu uh, Gavri Paruski. Oh, yeah. And Yalubiu Basketball. Yeah. You love basketball. Paka, <laughs> Druk. <laughs> Let's go. Travis, great to have you with us. Thanks for coming Thank on, you man. so much. You guys are the best. Okay, check out the latest Deep Blue podcast featuring another guy with Russian connection, Mr. Triple Double, Kyle Collinsworth, went on his mission there as he dives into the ups and downs of his NBA journey, recovery from his ACL injury, and living a healthy lifestyle. You can find it wherever you get podcasts. Oh, you mean at Big Russia 5? That's what his handle yeah, used to be. Yeah, yeah, it was once upon a time. Yeah. After the break, we'll play a game of buy, sell, or hold. Like, is BYU basketball a top six team in the Big 12 next year under Kevin Young? This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Jerem. Let's get to today's headlines, beginning with some breaking news of sorts. Jeff Borzello tweeting, breaking. BYU transfer Jackson Robinson is withdrawing from the NBA draft and will be committing to Kentucky, he told ESPN. So there it is, Jackson to Kentucky. Interesting. I wonder why it took so long. It's uh, kind of a strange deal, but best of luck to Jackson as he goes yep. to join Mark Pope at Kentucky. Not shocking and uh, somewhat expected. Just surprised that it took this long to announce it. Sure. But it's happening. BYU Athletic Director Tom Holmo in an interview with KSL Sports said BYU football's 2025 non-conference schedule is, quote, close to finished. We know that BYU needs to add a Power 5 team, most likely as a home game. Homo added they're currently working on the 2026 and 2027 schedules as well. Give me Miami, Jerem. That'd be fun, man. I'd take it. Big 12 will announce four kick times today for Cougar football, including the first three games and the non-Saturday game of Oklahoma State. Evening kicks, except in Laramie, please. <laughs> <laughs> Former Cougar Andrew Pintar. How about this big time play yesterday for the Hillsboro Hops. What a catch in their 3-2 win over the Eugene Emeralds. Pintar, one for three from the plate as well to join that outstanding defensive play in the outfield. And Selena Damuni of women's volleyball and daughter of Jack Damuni received her mission call this week. Uh, yesterday, in fact, your dad posted on X about it. Signed to the Fiji Suva Mission. The Demunis are Fijian, so that's pretty cool going back home for where uh, Jack grew up prior to playing at BYU. She leaves September 9th. Congratulations to 
the Demunis. That smile is worth a million bucks. That's awesome. awesome. Congratulations. Those are today's headlines. Now, some opinions in the whip. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marist, your e commerce logistics shipping partner. Okay, we're going to play a little buy, sell, or hold. We'll start with this sound bite from ESPN's Fran Fraschilla from the show yesterday about BYU men's basketball being a top 25 team next season. I have a feeling that at some point during the season, they'll, they'll be in the top 25 again. Spencer, do you buy, sell, or hold that BYU will be in the top 25 for multiple weeks next men's basketball season? There will certainly be opportunities to impress voters, Jeremy. <laughs> they will have so many opportunities to win big time games, to attract the attention of these voters. BYU will win some of them because they win at home specifically a lot. Yes, I am buying this that BYU and Kevin Young in year one will have the Cougars in the top 25 for multiple weeks. Where do you stand on this? Oh, yeah, but we're saying two plus? Bye. Absolutely. You, you don't get, you know, two ESPN top 100 guys and a projected lottery pick and not and add to an, a tremendous score and not feel like you're going to. Well, remember, BYU was a projected preseason top 25 team after the NCAA tournament. Then the Mark Pope stuff happened, and then all of a sudden they were off radars. How much has what Kevin Young has done changed the opinions of preseason voters? Like, will BYU get votes in the preseason top 25? I'm inclined to believe they might. I, I think BYU will add another piece or two and be in the top 25 preseason. To begin? Yes. Oh, let's go. Okay, and let's keep it rolling with Fran Fraschilla. Yesterday, he also said this about BYU being in the top half of the Big 12, again, 16-team conference next season, and what that means for BYU's postseason hopes. Now, having said that, I still think they're an NCAA team on paper, mm. probably top six or seven in the league somewhere, which is which is good, you know, uh, which means that in an 18 team league or whatever it is next year, <laughs> I think they have a chance to be in the NCAA tournament. I feel like 18 at times, but it's 60. It's 60. And he prefaced that soundbite by saying BYU got a taste of the Big 12, but he said it was down last year. So. We didn't experience the full measure of the Big 12. Fran said you will, it will be a typical, if not super high-level Big 12 season. And he still has BYU in the top half. So, Jerem, with the question based on that soundbite, do you buy, sell, or hold that BYU will be a top six team? He said six at one point in the Big 12. I probably hold on it. I'm hoping to buy. BYU needs, like, another piece or two for me to feel like buy. Because guess what? Sixth, you could still be in the top 25 and you could still be like a six seed again. Jerem, there are some that believe that the top five of the Big 12 will be in the top 10. Which means one or two seeds. Four in the top five yeah, right maybe now. Three seed. So if there are five, the top five Big 12 teams are in the top 10. If you're sixth, you might be in the top 15, as you said. Seven or eight, you could still be ranked. Yeah, that'd be They wild. could have eight teams in the top 25 legitimately. Okay, next one. Do you buy, sell, or hold the BYU will be a NCAA tournament team in year one under Kimber? I'm 100% buy. Yeah. I'm all in on yeah. this. Too much talent. You have to make the NCAA tournament. You bring so much of your core back, and you have added such high-level pieces, and energy is good, and recruitment has been incredible, otherworldly for BYU. Yes, I'm, I am buy. Pressure's on. You're too talented. Uh, you, can't, you can't have that good of a roster and not make the tourney. And coaching's not going to be an issue for Kevin Young. It's just whether that team can come together and the system fits and the ball bounces your way and you stay healthy, obviously. But, like, this team should make the turn. Yes. Abs absolutely. Yes. Pressure, that's a fair assessment. Bring, they say bring on the pressure. They're, they believe they're going to be in the tournament. It's just a matter of, like, how good can our seed be? Yes. Can you win a game in the tournament? And last but not least, at Nate Slack 5 posted this photo on X. This is great. Saying, found this pick and thought it needed to be shared. <laughs> Is that from 84? Cosmo with caffeine-free Coke which as his Which is not base. a thing at BYU, which is great. <laughs> Bring on the caffeine. Remember the gold can? The gold yes. can, caffeine-free Coke? It's like, oh, this is ours. Caffeine-free. <laughs> I'm like, this is, not a, this is not a thing. Why is this a thing? Uh, Jerem, do you buy, sell, or hold that we need more giant inflatable mascots on campus? Buy more inflatable <laughs> mascots. More, more Cosmos with the number one. Literally. Go buy them. Please. Is that find that one. Can you... If, if that still existed somewhere, 
I legitimately might bid on that thing. Where is that thing? And try and bring it to BYU Broadcasting. Worth a few thousand bucks. <laughs> awesome. Does it still exist somewhere? Who has it? Buy it, whoever. Put it in your yard, a yard decoration <laughs> nice. on game days. Some BYU fans are going to be like, oh, I have it. Up next, Matt Brown of Extra Points Newsletter joins us to share his experience of, get this, playing the brand new EA Sports college football video game and doing nice. so as BYU. What did he think of it? This is BYUSN. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. Joining us now, he is the pen, the face, the celebrity of the Extra <laughs> the Points pen. newsletter. I like, I like that. He is Matt Brown, a distinguished writer and fantastic college sports personality. Matt, welcome back to BYU SN. How are you today? Hey, fellas. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Okay, we brought you on specifically because you are so big time. You have gone A-list celebrity in the video game verse. You got the invite to go play college football 25 before basically everybody else in the world. How was that experience for you? It was it was really exciting. I've never been to any kind of video game event like this before. I've got a chance to put a, a face to a name of a lot of the developers and, and people behind the scenes that I've been talking with for the past several months. And maybe some I had to pretend that I wasn't talking to if the PR staff was, <laughs> was, uh, was, was, was right there. Uh, but I mean, it was, uh, it's not like they gave me the sticks. I just like left me alone for a little while. It was kind of a controlled environment, but when you've been writing about something for three years and you know how deeply important this is for so many people, right? I get more questions about this than anything else that I write about <laughs> and then be able to hold it in your hands and realize, oh yeah, this, this is, this is a real thing. Uh, that's a, it's a pretty unique experience and I'm, I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Okay. How was playing the game? It was a lot of fun. Right. And and I, I, I have to be careful as I say this, because like I'm not a competitive capital G gamer. I'm not a gaming journalist. And I'm I'm sitting there with many of these these YouTube content creators that play Madden for a living. And I'm like, you guys are going to beat me like 400 to nothing. I'm a dad. <laughs> I can't I can't critique the animation physics the same way here. But what I can tell everybody, right, is it feels really different from the last college football game. I think I, I'm going to have to take some time to relearn some mechanics. I think many other people here will too. But if you want a game that really deeply and accurately depicts what makes every market unique and special and all of its PlayStation 5 glory, uh, this did it perfectly. Uh, I, I, I think it'll be difficult to find specific parts of the, the LES experience that are not depicted in this game. I mean, I mean, even 3D scanning, like every single seat in the stadium. So it's like, okay, the, cheer, the, the ba opposing band mm. sits here. And when you come out of the tunnel, the cheerleaders are going to be here. And here's where the students are. And here's what they're chanting. And here's, uh, and here's Cosmo breakdancing. Like all of that stuff, very much <laughs> in the game. Wow, the attention, That's the detail cool. has gone next level. Matt, how long yeah. from day one to completion did this process take? years what i don't think people really appreciate is you really can't do anything with the code from the last game you know that came out two video game cycles ago many of the developers that maintained it are no longer with the with the company it's not the kind of thing where you could just like control c all of the code paste it somewhere else and then like okay we'll just add movie magic and now it's now it's real you're really having to start from scratch, whether that's from the stadium renderings, whether that's to how you depict athletes, to also the blood and guts and X's and O's of college football itself, right? Like the offensive schemes and how RPOs work and the rules work and how recruiting works, it's all it's all very different. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I can't say that maybe every single everything in college football is depicted in here because honestly, that wouldn't be fun. Right, you don't have to manage a payroll like you might if you're running a major <laughs> Power Five program the same way in this kind of game. But uh, I, I think that many of the decisions the developers made to try and match realism with fun uh, are most of those I think are going to work out here. I like that realism with fun. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for from the game. Okay, um, yeah. how was BYU in the game? Because uh, a lot of people aren't too high on the Cougs going into the fall. They, I mean, so I, I will preface this by saying I was playing an incomplete build. And EA is still adding real player likenesses into the game. They're still adjusting ratings. So what I saw is not necessarily the final product. But if I remember remembering correctly, I think that that team overall was in like the mid to low 70s, you know, a little bit higher on defense than on offense. I, I did 
play about about two quarters uh, of a game at BYU because I figured I, I think people in this market are going to be asking about it. Uh, I would say that this is a roster that would maybe be a very fun team to rebuild, but is not going to be a team I think that's going to be super competitive online unless you're just amazing. It's it's <laughs> that's going to be hard to score 50 points i think for what i saw it's going to be hard for BYU to score 50 points in real life we think too uh but we're <laughs> all still <laughs> crossing, our, we're crossing our fingers matt brown yeah. extra points newsletter is with us on byu sports nation so how does ea handle the situation where a handful of players opt out what do they do in those circumstances especially when they're high level players on notable teams Sure, like maybe, for example, a team like Texas, perhaps, or maybe a, maybe a quarterback of some renown. Uh, yeah, so the, the way this works is you're going to have probably less customization. Not probably. You are going to have less customization options for rosters uh, than maybe players might have enjoyed in, in previous years. So you you literally don't have the ability to you know pop into edit a roster and make March Manning uh, quarterback for Texas, hypothetically. Uh, or, or or anybody else. Uh, you're also not going to be able to export draft classes if you're a dynasty from one to the other because EA only paid for the licensing rights to be in one video game. And if you pay Gary Bahannon to be in the college football game and you export him to Madden, you have to pay him twice, which EA wasn't willing to do. So there's, there's going to be a little bit of push and pull, I think, as everybody tries to understand what we can do to be compliant with these legal licenses, what we can do financially to make sense. I understand that might be frustrating to some players, but... The overwhelming, overwhelming majority of current college athletes have opted into this game. I, I would imagine for BYU specifically, I'd be surprised if it's more than one or two uh, people on the top 85 of the roster that aren't in the game. What else did you learn uh, playing this game and talking to people about this game that uh, will have fans, whether it be BYU or otherwise, excited to play? Yeah, I, I think that the typical core mode for a lot of people is dynasty, right? Where you, you're taking over a team and you're hiring coordinators, you're building recruiting pipelines, you're changing what kind of coach you want to be. Like, do you want to be the person that's really a, a tactician and is coaching up a bunch of two or three stars? Are you somebody that wants to build your roster completely in the transfer portal, which you couldn't do before? Are you trying to be the master recruiter and just kind of roll the ball out there? You can do all of those things. I, I'm actually cautiously optimistic about the new road to glory mode where users take over a, a hypothetical defensive back or quarterback or running back and play as that player throughout their career. Uh, this year, rather than starting in high school, you you, you start in college, but it's, it's really about time management, right? Because if you're a real college athlete, you have to decide between time for school, time for training, time for developing leadership and coach trust, time chasing NIL deals, and your own health because everybody is banged up by November and maybe you can't do that photo shoot or autograph session because you need to be getting a deep tissue massage so you can walk for that game on November 11th. That push and pull is very much a part of Road to Glory where there's not really a perfect way to play. And I can imagine a lot of people are going to find that to be really, uh, really rewarding and really interesting. Matt, what do the uniform combos look like for BYU and maybe some of the other notables that you like in the game? Yeah, so this was another thing that wasn't completely finalized. The, the three things that developers said we're still putting in here relative to the game that you saw are individual, like real players, uh, individual uniforms, and plays. So some of the playbooks weren't were completely finished. But BYU's it looked like it was mostly done. And shoot, I want to say there were at least 16 different combinations, wow. which people can then mix and match, right? So you've got the royal blue helmet, wow. jersey, pants, socks. You've got navy. You've got, I think, I, I want to say it was two different blackout variations along with the whites. Uh, I imagine people on this program will, will be pleased to know that I double-checked because I thought I might come on this show might be asked. Uh, the tan bib uniforms were not included. <laughs> uh, I can't speak to whether those well are going to be added later, but I didn't see them in the game right now, right? Um, if, you're, if you're a uniform aficionado, I could say that like almost everybody has more than five or six. Organs, as you might imagine, there were at least two dozen, including like the eggshell uniform, some of the pink ones. Uh, I think people are going to be able to be very creative in how they mix and match um, and can also upload and create their own. You have the capability now to, to make your own team. So hypothetically, if you were a big Weber State fan and Weber State's not in the game this year and you wanted to get on the computer and make uniforms that looked very close to Weber State and iconography that looked very close to Weber State and upload that in your dynasty, you could do that. He's an incredible personality, an incredible writer. You should Google Extra Points newsletter and subscribe because he's awesome. Matt, thanks for the time, brother. Of course. Take it easy, fellas. I appreciate you guys.
Up next, your ideal kick times for BYU football. There's four going to be announced today. This is BYU Sports Nation. 8-15! The BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back, our elite voice of the day, presented by Pax Healthcare Elevated from At Y for Life on X, who is asking for late kick times. The later, the better. BYU wins the late kicks. You get it. Cougs after dark. No, they didn't always work out last year. More often than not. Today's Rise and Shoutout, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BGR on our mission, September 9th, congrats. Our thanks to today's guests. They were outstanding, Travis Hansen and Matt Brown. Yeah, we learned a lot, that was great. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of time. For Jerem, I'm Spencer, and a final shout out to Timo Sarliainen. Join us tomorrow, BYU Sports Nation Deep Blue Special, Go Cougs.